the Quilt Matters Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Semi. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a quilt label. It's important to include a quilt label on the back of every quilt that you make because you want the story of that quilt to carry on for generations to come. Chances are you've made a lot of quilts and who knows which ones are the ones that are going to be cherished and loved from generations to come. So you want to make sure you record certain important information such as your name, the year that you completed it, the title, and sometimes maybe who it was made for. So if, for example, if you make a quilt for your grandbaby, if you say with love from grandma, that really doesn't say much. You want to have your name and, and the name of the child that it was made for. So that way, years from now, people know that story and remember you and the special occasion you made the quilt for. So what I do is, I, my machine doesn't do embroidery, but it does have some fancy stitches, including letters, that I can string together to make words. And that's what I use to make my quilt label. So I'm going to show you how I do that, and then you guys can follow along and do it at home if your machine also has these capabilities. Now the first thing we want to do is prepare our label. And you're going to want to prepare two of these. One as a sample so that you can figure out exactly how much space all your letters are going to take up. And then the second one is your actual label that you are able to center and make everything nice once you know how big everything is going to be. Now generally my letters are about a half inch tall and so I like, and I'm going to have three lines of text on this. So I like to make mine large enough to have a little bit of space in between that. That's going to be your personal preference. This one measures about three and a half inches by ten inches wide. That's usually big enough for me, but if you want to get a lot of information on yours, you may want to consider making it larger than that. And the other thing I have here is I have a plate, a piece of woven um, fusible interfacing and it's woven which I prefer because then it actually behaves like fabric because it is fabric it just has a fusible agent on one side and I'm going to actually fuse that to the wrong side of this and it's cut a half inch sh shorter than the width and so that way I'll be able to curve the edges underneath and then I can stitch those in using the same stitch I will for binding and we'll get to that at the very end. But I'm going to show you how I fuse this and then we're going to do our sample and get that ready to go. So whenever you're working with a fusible product there always is going to be a shiny side and in this case it's kind of hard to see on the screen but this is the shiny side and that's the side that I want to have up because I do not want to fuse it to my ironing board, I want to fuse it to my fabric. And you're going to want to read the instructions for your fusible interfacing, but for this one, I need to center that on the back of the fabric. And so I have the wrong side of my yellow fabric facing up, and then I have the shiny side down against that wrong side of this yellow fabric. And now I'm just going to hold my iron over that for a few seconds, move it up, and usually I found with most fusibles that I've worked with that it works really well if you actually put the heat on the side of the interfacing that is fusible. So by that I mean right now the, the sticky, the shiny side is up but it is sticking to the wrong side of this yellow fabric and by applying heat to this I'm able to really get it to stick well. So now that I've got that on, now I'm going to take the edges and I'm going to fold them over. And this is kind of high, you may want to let it cool down a little bit in between. But I'm just going to fold those edges over and press it down. And they don't really want to stay this first time. You can use some spray starch if that is easier for you. But I'm just going to go ahead and get both sides and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to press on the other side again and that really helps get those edges nice and crisp and folded over. Now if you also can sew letters with your machine, you're going to want to make sure you refer to your manual to make sure you know which key instruction you need to put in to get your decorative stitches in order. In my case, I'm going to make sure I refer to mine and then I'm going to use my keypad to select the order of letters I want. In this case, I'm just going to put uh, my name in first. 
So I finished keying in my name and now I'm ready to sew it onto my sample which has been prepared the exact same way as my actual label. And the reason why I want to use a sample is even though I've sewn my name in dozens of other quilt labels, the fabric you choose and the thread you choose can make a difference in how long the name is going to be. And so I want to see how it behaves on this fabric so I can make it nice and centered. I've also changed my foot to the one that's recommended for embroidery and decorative stitches because that's what we're using here today. And once I get started, I just want to hold down my presser foot as fast as it will go in order to get the best results. And that's true for my machine. It may be a little different for yours, so you want to play with it and figure out what works for your machine. So now I'm going to use my ruler and a chalk marking tool to mark off where I want my lines to be of text. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have two and a half inches from fold to fold and my letters are each a half inch tall. So the very center is going to be one and a quarter but since I need to have that half inch letter go across that, I'm actually going to remove a quarter inch to measure just one inch from the fold here for my bottom line to be at, or my middle line to be at rather. Then I'm going to do a quarter inch from the bottom and three quarter of an inches from that line I just marked and that should give me pretty even spacing and you know feel free to use a calculator to figure this out for your own machine um, I know I didn't get it right away but this will give me even spacing the other thing I want to do is I want to find my center so I'm just going to give that a little finger press there so that I have a line to work off of and I'm going to go ahead and mark that too with my pink line so it's a little easier for you guys to see at home. And now I know that my name takes up about four and three quarters of an inch. And my name is going to be on the last line. So four and three quarters will give me about, if I do like two and three eighths, that will be a good starting point. So I'm two and three eighths from center, so that means my name will go from here to about here. And that looks about right. You can always eyeball it to make sure that it looks right. So now I'm gonna make a mark here of where I need to start my name on my sewing machine. So now I'm gonna take this back over, line everything up, and sew my name on for real. So I'm lining up the furthest point that my needle will go with the line that I marked and I'm lining that needle up with that line I drew where I want my letters to start. And once I have everything where I want it to go, then I'm just going to press my presser foot down as far as it'll go and let my name get sewn in. the name onto the lower part that I marked and now I'm going to repeat this process with my two other lines both first by testing it on our test piece and then actually sewing it onto the actual label so it's nice and center and in this case I'm going to write the name of the pattern and then quilt addicts anonymous because it's going on a quilt that's an original pattern uh, that I designed for the website so you go ahead and do that too and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to attach this to the back of your quilt so I've got my label done and now it's time to attach it to the back of the machine. I've gone ahead and switched my foot back to my regular presser foot. You could also use a walking foot if you prefer. And I've got some pins and I'm going to go ahead and pin this to the back of my quilt top. So I've actually already bound this quilt except for the one corner that I'm going to sew the label onto. And I just want to make sure that I tuck under that fold that we pressed in and then I'm going to stick a little pin in there to hold that fold in place 
and then I'm going to take it over to the other side and make sure that it's, it's good and taut all the way through. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a pin in there as well. Then I need to make sure I do the other, the bottom as well. Pin that into place. And you really want to make sure that your binding is pressed under. You don't want it popping out when you're doing this because we don't want to sew that in going the wrong direction. All right, so now I have everything pinned over. So now I'm actually gonna flip this over. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew right over that seam line from where the bob or from where the binding is. So now I want to just go ahead and cut off this extra. Be careful not to cut into your binding when you do this. You just want to make it so that it's now even with the edge of the quilt. All right, so we are almost done here. The last thing we need to do before you can finish binding the quilt is to tack down this edge that we folded under. And it's actually really simple. You're gonna use the exact same stitch you will for binding. So if you've ever bound a quilt, then you'll know how to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just bury my knot in this edge here and pull it forward. And then I'm just gonna sew exactly as I would if I were sewing binding, except I'm pulling my needle out on the fold of my label instead of the fold of my binding edge. And you do want to make sure that you don't go through to the front because you don't want to see these stitches. But that's all you do, just sew right along until you have all this turned under and tacked down and then you can bind as normal and your quilt label is finished. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial from Quilt Addicts Anonymous. Go ahead and Click on the link to the website where you can find lots more quilting tips and tricks, and happy quilting!